Hello everyone, welcome to the video on chapter 12.1, Introductions to Amino Acid SK025 Chemistry. For amino acid, it contains a basic amino group NH2 and an acidic carboxyl group COOH on the same structure. So NH2 group will bond to the alpha carbons of COOH. So based on this general formula, this is your amino group attached to the alpha carbon with this COOH group. And then for this G will be the side change and it's different from all the amino acids. Okay, amino acid can be found in most of the proteins. They differ from each other, depends on the side chain G in the structures. But all the amino acid were containing NH2 attached to the alpha carbon with this COOH group. Next, let's look at the nomenclatures of this amino acid. It still says as usual, we need to identify its the parents, which is the longest carbon chain bearing the COOH functional group as it has the highest priority amongst all. And for this NH2, it being a substituent, and we name it as amino group. So carboxylic acid has higher priority compared to amine. So giving the first structures over here, COOH will be your first carbon, and then we figure out where is your longest carbon chain. So in this case, we have three carbons in the main parent chain and NH2 as the substituents amino. So two amino propanoic acid. The second structure is over here, again the same thing, COH will be your first carbon, and then you need to figure out the longest carbon change. So we have carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, be careful that this CH3, okay, two groups, that means one of it we will uh, find it in the parents, and then another one will be the substituents at carbon number 4. Okay, so we label it accordingly, carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 with another substituents at that carbon number 4. Okay, so amino start with the letter N and then uh, the CH3 methyl start with the letter N. So two amino, four methyl pentanoic acid. Okay, parents containing five carbon pentanoic acid. The next thing given over here, two amino, three hydroxy propanoic acid. So parents with three carbon carboxylic acid and you have another two substituents. Okay, so this is your propanoic acid, amino at carbon number two, hydroxy at carbon number three. Next one, we have two amino, three phenyl propanoic acid. Again, the same thing, three carbons in the main parent. At carbon number two, you have NH2, carbon number three, you have a benzene substituent, we name it as phenyl. Okay, so propanoic acid, NH2, and the phenyl. All right, in the notes given, you have the common names of 20 standard amino acid. So all this amino acid has the different side chain G. Okay, so just taking a few examples, glycine, side chain is hydrogens. So if you look at this alpha carbon, the side chain is H. Alanine, um, the short form L, the side chain CH3. So over here at the alpha carbon CH3. Okay, and then valine, you have another isopropyls over here, and then leucine with another substituents given. Right, so um, following the content in the notes, you can go through the 20 standard amino acids. Here, only show you four examples only. The remaining, you can check out in the notes. All right, so come to the next uh, introductions of this amino acid. We have two new terms here. The first terms here, we have zwitterion an isoelectronic point with the symbol PI. So for this deuterion, it's a neutral compound that containing both positive and negative charge at the same uh, structures. So for this, given a general formula of this or general structures of amino acid, so at the COOH part, you are losing a hydrogen becoming COO minus, which is your carboxylic ion negatively charged. And then on the ammonia side, when it, uh, receiving the hydrogens from this COOH, it becomes ammonia cation with a positive charge. So these structures represent a general structure of zwitterion, in which uh, both positive sign and negative sign appear at the same time. Whereas for this isoelectronic PI, it is the pH at which the amino acid exists primarily in its neutral form, which we call it as the zwitterion. 
So at this point, concentrated of this deuterium is at its maximum, and then the net charge equals to zero. That means, all right, so look at your example questions number one. Draw the structures of two amino four methyl pentanoic acid. So you have to draw the structures first before you can draw the structures of deuterium. Okay, so two amino four methyl pentanoic acid. You got five carbon and the main change carbon number two with this NH two. So this is your alpha carbon, um, and then another substituent at carbon number four. So when it exists at Pi equals to five, this is your isoelectric point. So the NH two become NH three plus, and then CH uh, COOH become COO negative. So this will be the structures of your zeuterion. So when you look at this PI, it refers to a structures of a zeuterion. So NH3 positive, COO negative. And if the question mentions about the pH, if let's say uh, this second example at pH2. So this pH2 is less than the PI value. Okay, 2 is less than 5, so this refers to an acidic medium. So in acidic medium, there's extra hydrogen. So the H plus will begin by this COO minus. So what is going to produce over here? The COO minus in this um, neutral form of zeuterium, it will gain the H plus from the acidic medium to become COOH. Okay, and then this NH3 positive remains unchanged. Another simple ways to re uh, remember it, at acidic medium, there will be overall positive charge for the structures produced. All right, so if the question is giving you the pH equals to 10, in which the pH is greater than the pI value given, okay, the pI value given just now is 5. So this refers to a basic medium. Okay, the amino acid exists as basic medium. So in basic medium, we have extra OH minus. So based on the neutral form of this deuterium, OH minus will take out the extra hydrogens of this um, NH3 positive. So this NH3 positive will then return back to NH2. Okay, and then the CO minus remains unchanged. So the structures uh, that you are going to form will have overall negative charge. Okay, so from NH3, losing a proton become NH2, and then COO minus remains unchanged. So for basic medium, overall negatively charged. Hello everyone, welcome to the video chapter 12.2, Chemical Properties of Amino Acid, SK025 Chemistry. So for amino acid, it has the chemical properties for both amine, NH2 functional group, and carboxylic acid, COH functional groups. So for this amino acid, it can behave as both acid and a base. So first, let's look at amino acid being an acid. So the reaction site focusing on the COH group. So first of all, amino acid can react with this sodium hydroxide and acid, a base producing salt and water. So taking an example, when it reacts with sodium hydroxide, the hydrogens will substitute with the uh, sodium ion to form this sodium carboxylate salt, and the side product will be H2O. The second reaction uh, for this amino acid, it can react with an alcohol, which is an esterification reaction. But for this esterification, it's going to produce a protonated ester. Okay, amino acid react with alcohol in the presence of acid catalyst under reflux or hot condition, it producing a protonated ester and the side product H2O. So in the presence of this acid catalyst, the basic side of NH2 group will react with the acid. So for this reaction, it's a irreversible reaction. So at the COOH positions, the OH is going to react with the alcohol. So taking out the OH from the carboxylic acid, taking the hydrogens from the alcohol, and then we are forming this ester. And at the same time, the basic site, NH2, is going to react with the acid present in the solution to form this protonated species. Okay, and H3+. Plus. Remember, one hydrogen with four bonding, it becomes positively charged. And next, we have the amino acid as a base. 
So the reaction site focus on the NH2. So the reaction is this kind of similar with the primary um, aliphatic amine. So the reactions with HCl, a base can react with the acid to form ammonium salt with water. All right, neutralization reaction. So taking the same example, and now we are focusing on the NH2 functional group. So NH2, when you react with HCl, you are producing an ionic salt. Okay, this one is your ammonium salt. The next reaction for this amino acid to be a base, it can react with nitrous acid, HNO2. Okay, so this is a nitro acid test. The reaction is kind of similar with the primary amine, primary aliphatic amine. Um, so for this amino acid, under the presence of sodium nitrate HCl, nitrous acid uh, reagent, you are producing hydroxyl carboxylic acid, alkenoid acid, and halogenated carboxylic acid together with the release of nitrogen gas. So four products all together. So giving an example, this is in general because you are substitute with this side change G. So under the presence of sodium nitrite, HCl, and then temperatures, you can written down this one as well, 0 to 5 degrees Celsius for nitrous acid. Um, so you're going to form this diazonium salt intermediate. And then after that, because it is very unstable, it is going to break down to form nitrogen gas. Okay, so remember, over here, when nitrogen gas is released, you are creating carbocation. So from this carbocation, it's going to form um, at hydroxy carboxylic acid, alkenoid acid, and also halogenated acid. So giving the examples over here, you have aniline. Okay, um, you can name it in according to the general IUPAC naming which is 2-aminopropanoid acid. So for this nitrous acid reaction, you are going to form an alcohol. So the positions at which you release the NH2, okay, imagine this NH2 you are going to release and then forming a positive carbocation over here. Okay, and then these positions, you are going to substitute with the OH, you are going to substitute with a Cl, and also you are going to create an alkenoid acid. Okay, remember one carbon, for bonding, so double bond between um, these two carbons only. And then lastly, we have the nitrogen gas. So four products all together. Next, let's try questions number two. Draw the structures of compound A to F in the reaction scheme below. So given the amino acids over here, you may practice about the naming. So first figure out the longest carbon change over here, which is your propanoid acid. This is your carbon number one, two, and three. And positions number two, you have this amino substituents. Positions number three, you have the phenol. So the name, two amino, three phenol, propanoid acid. So when this um, amino acid react with HCl, we focus at the basic side of these structures. So NH2 become NH3 positive. So the reactions between amino acid with an acid, it produces an ammonium salt. Okay, don't forget that there is a Cl minus here. Okay, an ammonium salt. So the second reaction is over here between the amino acid with the base. Okay, so acidic side of this amino acid will react with the base to create carboxylate salt. So COOH becomes COO negative and A positive. And of course, there will be a side product H2O. The next reaction is between your amino acid with nitrous acid. Okay, the reactions of nitrous acid similar to the primary aliphatic amine, and it's going to form four different products together with this ammonial gas. So imagine that after this NH2 is being removed, you are creating a carbocation at this second carbon. Okay, so first product is going to form uh, when the, from this secondary carbocation is an alkene. So our general structures over here, we call it as alkenoid acid. The second product, you're going to substitute with the OH to create this hydroxy carboxylic acid. And the third products over here, at the same positions, we have the halogenated carboxylic acid. Okay, so you refer back to the structures at the second carbon, at the second carbon, and the second carbon as well. And then please check it again, one carbon, uh, there is four bondings. Okay, lastly, the reactions between amino acid with 
alcohol in the presence of acid, you are going to create protonated ester. So the COOH from this amino acids react with the alcohol. So carboxylic acid, take out the OH. Alcohol, take out the hydrogens. And you're going to form an ester at this position. Okay, this part is from the amino acid. And then this part is from your ethanol. And for this esterifications of amino acid, please remember that the basic site NH2 is going to react with the acid to create this ammonium ion. To create this ammonium ion. So from NH2, it becomes NH3 positive. So please take note that this is a protonated ester and there is a side product H2O. Lastly, let's look at this formations of peptide bond uh, for the amino acid. So amide linkage or peptide bond is formed between the NH2 for one amino acid and the COH of another amino acid. So it involves two amino acids. This functional group C O and H or C double bond O and H before this we known as carboxylic functional group. Okay, but if it is between two amino acids, um, the bondings over here we will label as a peptide bond or amide linkage. Okay, amide linkage or peptide bonds. So one peptide bond is made by two peptide molecules forming a dipeptide. So giving the examples over here, you have two different amino acids. Either they are the same, uh, they have the same side chain G or different. Okay, so remember how you are forming the side product H2O. Here is the formations of your peptide bond. Okay, and the products, the whole product between two amino acids forming a dipeptide. For example, here is the structures of alanine. So it will take out the OH and combine with the hydrogen of cysteine. So take out the side product H2O and form a dipeptide as the product. So the name of this dipeptide, we just take the short form LR-cis. Okay, LR from alanine and then cis from cysteine. And then here is your peptide bond. The whole structure is over here, we call it a dipeptide. So let's look at the questions number three. Write the equations for the formations of two possible dipeptides formed from valine and glycines. Indicate the peptide bond on the structures form. So you are given the structures of valine and glycine, two different amino acids. And you're asked to form valine glycine, very gly. So valine first, and then after that, you follow by a glycine structures. So they are next to each other. So imagine that we take out the OH from valine and take out one of the hydrogens from this glycine. So valine glycine, we are going to form these structures. So for the bondings over here, you just label this is the peptide bond between two amino acids. Okay, the next one we have the glycine. So that means glycine first before valine. So the structures or the peptide bond is forming between these two species. And this is a, a glycine valley. And here again is your peptide bond form. Okay, and then this between two of these amino acids, you're going to form this peptide bond. So it depends what is the structure is giving you the combinations. So you arrange accordingly. So that's the end of our chapter 12. Um, please attempt the exercises and I'll see you in the next chapters.